Why don't you, Ronnie? Ronnie ain't new here, honey, okay? Because, Charles, your lipo ready. I'm only going to do it for you. Uh -huh. Guys, gals, and guests, honey, yes, honey, we back. It's another Wednesday, and baby, we got to talk about the mess, honey. We got to get into the mess a little bit, honey. We going to start with my mess. If you was here yesterday for the Vogue review, then you know that Matt was struggling to make it through the live stream. Matt was having a really hard time getting through the live stream. Honey, I had warned y'all that Matt was going to be kicked out before the end of the live stream. Honey. Well, to give y'all a little bit back up, Matt was supposed to be coming over and blowing the billica with your girl. I had waited too late to place my dispensary order. My good friend Matt was supposed to be coming over. To blow one down with the girl. Honey, Matt gets here and he ain't even got no gas. Honey, no gas, no grass. Honey, and Matt ain't never had no ass. Honey, never had no ass. Child, honey, Matt gets over here. Honey, Matt started to get on my nerves when I already ain't got no bilica, honey. And guess what happened to Matt? Matt ended up getting put out. Yeah. It's just audio. It's just audio. We not uh -huh. speaking Matt's set. I don't want to make sure everything is locked up. Max, sorry, girl. Honey, baby. Now, like I told y'all, it's just audio. We ain't trying to put Matt T out or nothing, honey. Matt wanted to come over here. I, w I wanted to blow it down. Honey, Matt wanted to come over here and, and dress up. Yeah, y'all know I be having cross-dresser friends and stuff. Yeah, honey, I be trying to give the children a safe space to live their best life. You know, and, and not their hetero assimilating life. Yeah, honey. I think Matt might be one of the girls, but Matt know that that voice is clocky. Matt know that that voice is clocky, so Matt go ahead and, and settle for a, a cross dress and stuff. Child, did y'all see this foolishness, honey? Some rapper named JP. Don't ask me where JP from and don't ask me what JP rap. But JP has something to say, and he wanted to let y'all know that he is not a gay, honey. He is not. Is we rhyming again tonight? Look, I don't like, I don't like niggas. I don't like niggas. I, don't like I just tapped that nigga. Your, uh, your ass. Never make a bitty hit her knees. Would you do it again? I ain't gonna lie, me making my decision, nigga, that's like the same way you made the decision to crack a bad bitch or like to crack a hoe. I made the decision to What's crack a nigga. Oh, mm. Mm, gee, shut the fuck, Jay. Shut up, bro. Hey, money good. I'm cracking crack shit. Like, I'm Jay. 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 I'm Oh, Lord, y'all couldn't even hear me. 
I was saying that I could relate to what Jay was saying, honey. I was saying that I could relate to what Jay was saying because I don't like men neither. But I stay cracking. I'm getting cracked by him. Honey, and I'm not a gay neither. JP said that he's not a gay. I'm not a gay neither. I'm not a homosexual. I'm a bisexual. A pansexual, actually. And I'm thinking that JP might be a skillet as well. I'm thinking that JP might be a pansexual as well. Honey. Depending on how JP gets in. But JP, I understand your struggle, honey. I don't like the menses neither. Honey, they gets on your nerves, don't they? Real bad. But you still got to crack them. Honey, just like they cracked Miss Netta. Honey, have y'all seen Charles and Netta's results? <laughs> have y'all gotten into Charles and Netta results? Charles, your life already. Hey. Honey, yes. Honey, Charles got his eight pack. Honey, yes. Netta got her Debbie cakes. Honey. Yeah. Charles got that six pack going on, guys. He is two days post up. Charles is relaxed right now. Charles is relaxing. He's on the beach right now. He's feeling good. Two days post up. Charles, how you doing right now today? How you feeling? Count that six again. <laughs> oh, he said count that six again. That's right. He got an eight pack going on. Charles got an eight pack. Two days post stop. He's feeling great. Relax right now on the beach, guys. That's right. So stay tuned for this amazing result. Again, guys, they are both just two days post stop. I love that they got the procedures done together so they can heal together. And what better way to maximize those results other than getting them done here at Gold's Plastic Surgery, the one stop shop for all of your beauty needs. Guys, a post-operative massage is in fact a specialized massage to release any toxins, contour to find your physique, and then also just speed up the recovery process. So guys, what are you waiting for? Don't wait to be great. Choose Gold's Plastic Surgery, the one-stop shop for all of your beauty needs. Guys, my name's Imani. It is always a pleasure going live with, with you all. We the Dream, dream team. team. We'll see you guys on the next... Imani had miscounted Charles' packs. Honey, Charles said, count them again. Charles said that that is not a six pack. That is an eight pack sitting on top of a keg. Honey, baby. Yep. I'm glad that goes because y'all know goes is known for botching people. I'm glad goes is giving them their massages though. If you ever get any liposuction work done and they don't massage you, then honey, mm, you might want to rethink it. Honey, you might want to call Dr. Jabro ahead of time before you even heal. Good, honey. I'm telling you, botched. Yes, honey, it was good that they did the massages. Now, you know, I'm wondering how Charles had ended up getting this eight pack, but he still got saddlebags, honey. I'm wondering how Charles ended up getting this eight pack, but he still got saddlebags. Child, honey, pray for Charles. Honey, TikTok then just removed my live access again. TikTok, honey, when I tell y'all, y'all ain't shot. Y'all ain't shot, honey. TikTok. Mm, baby. But let's get into Netta's results, honey. Guys, and we are actually now back here live with yet another update on Miss Netta and Charles. Miss Netta, how you feeling day two post-op? I'm feeling great. I mean, you are absolutely looking great, Miss Netta. So, Miss Netta, tell the people how this experience has been for you yet this far. What did you feel during surgery? How are you feeling now, two days post-op? Well, after I had the surgery, it was uh, it was it was really not a bad feeling. But after that, you know, after that first night, you get stiff up, and that's when the pain start hit. But after massage is going for a couple of days or whatever to get all the knots and the crinks and the crumples out of it, then it's a whole lot better. Absolutely, absolutely, guys, and I'm just thrilled to showcase this, this amazing, amazing journey because, because the knots and the crimps and the crumples. Keep that in mind. Miss Netta, Netta did begin, begin with, with a full back flex scope procedure, double BBL. So we just can't wait till she's all fully healed in approximately three to six months. So that way we can do second round of procedure of the full abdomen. Today, Miss Netta is doing her post-op massage, guys. And these are imperative to that recovery, guys. Stay tuned to see how amazing this lovely result is. Again, guys, Miss Netta is just, just two days post-op. Post Miss Netta is just two days post-op, and she know that she going straight to hell for showing this Nestle Crunch bar on the internet, don't she? Why Miss Netta look like it's a Nestle Crunch? What is that, monkey pox? What is happening? 
what is happening? Can somebody please explain? I need, somebody get Angelique back on the line. Let's see. Maybe it was, you know, part of the lipo procedure. Let's let's see this a couple more days post that. Jenny, Jenny listen, listen, do you have any words of encouragement for any woman watching this video right now that are um, considering surgery? All I think I can tell you, if you want to do it, do it for yourself. Like me, don't do it for nobody else. And, um, you know, after a while, you better be able to be like Miss Nettle. You better go in the club and shake it. That's right. That's shake right. Shake that booty. Ooh, <laughs> child, Miss Nettle, you going to give us a little shake and shake? Yes, Ooh, that's right. Baby, one, one day, day post stop, guys. Oh, I'm sorry. This was before, honey. This 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 was as the Nestle Crunch was formed. Your lipo ready. I'm glad Miss Netta got a pill though. I'm glad. Yeah, she got a chemical pill. She's working on that skin. I'm not sure if they chemical pill that ass, but she's been working on that skin. Officially done with her first peel. We are now letting her use the fan because you know it burns just a little bit when it goes on. But she is getting ready to be looking all glammed up. Y'all get ready for these results because she gonna be outside, not in. Okay. okay. Honey, she's gonna be outside and not in. Honey, and them right now them bumps is outside and not in. Okay, honey, but we're gonna hope that she gets it together. What's going on, Ronnie? Uh, honey, what's going on, Ladarian? They gave Charles a steroid body. Oop, oop. Keep it in mind, Ronnie. Keep it in mind. What's up, AJ? Honey, Chow. Give me 17 seconds. Let me answer the door. Honey, give me 17 seconds. Let me answer the door. Give me 25 seconds. I'll be being on board. Give me 35 seconds. I'm going to give you some more. Oh, oh, oh. Come on in. Lock the door. Make sure the door is locked. Honey, we got the people. We got the people on the line. Yeah. All right, child. Honey. Next topic. Dylan Mulvaney and Lady Gaga. Yeah, honey. The people got up in arms because Dylan Mulvaney had posted a picture on Women's Day, honey. And they said that Dylan Mulvaney is not one of the women's, 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 women's. And then Lady Gaga came to Dylan's rescue, like all of the Caucasian celebrities come to Dylan's rescue. And Lady Gaga said that to her, Dylan is a woman's, 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 woman's. Now, it's been a debate back and forth, honey, but ultimately, I'm here to remind the public that International Women's Day is not International Cisgender Women's Day. Now, y'all get together with y'all delegation, honey, and y'all get together with y'all cisgender women's board if that's what y'all want. If y'all want a cisgender women's day, which I feel y'all deserve, then that's what y'all need to do because we definitely have our trans day of visibility, honey. However, with me being penile and all, honey, with me having a uh, erection uh, and all of the things, I'm still going to celebrate women's, women's, women's day as a women's, women's, women's. Okay, is that okay? Guess what? I was about to ask you, is that okay with you? But I don't care. I don't care. Now, when it becomes cisgender women's day, honey, then I will step my two steps back, honey, just like I do during indigenous celebration, just like I do when we celebrate in Caucasian people every day of the year. Um, yes, I will take my steps back. But a lot of y'all is complaining about Dylan. And Lady Gaga and posting and Women's Day. What do y'all be doing on Women's Day? Do y'all be posting or acknowledging any women? Do y'all post or acknowledge yourself? If Dylan Mulvaney didn't post, would you have known it was International Women's Day? I'm here to tell a lot of you hoes that you need to get a life, honey, outside of transphobia. Next, honey, you know we ain't sticking around on Dylan too long, honey. I'm not Dylan's biggest supporter, honey. But when you're right, you're right. And what I tell y'all about broken clocks. They got a couple opportunities to be right, even though they're broken. Yes. Don Lemon. How the hell did Don Lemon get fired on a Friday? How did Don Lemon get fired on his day? Oh, what is happening? Fired on the first day. Don Lemon, they got fired on the first day. Yes, honey. You know Don Lemon had got fired from CNN, honey. 
Well, they, they're they not calling it a termination. They're calling it something else. But, you know, when people don't show up to work no more and they're not welcome in the office with us, they fired. Okay. Um, but Don, you know, it wasn't, don't cry for Don Argentina. He had got a cute little settlement from CNN, honey. And then he had got a job by Elon Musk. Honey, he was going on the X, formerly known as the Twitter. Yes, and was doing the show. Well, honey, Don's first show, the guest was Elon Musk. Now, honey. Now, you know, people, you know, Don is, um, you know, a bit more liberal. And you know, Elon is a bit more conservative, even though he got 12 children from 13 baby mamas. You know, he's, you know, he's conservative. When it comes to the the queers and the and the blacks and all of that, you know, rich man conservative, y'all know, like Trump. Anyway, long story short, Don did that interview with Elon, and we no longer have to question Elon's intentions. We were wondering if Elon was really about free speech, because he had hired Don Lemon, a liberal, to have a show on his platform. And he fired Don's ass by the end of the interview. So now you no longer have to question whether Elon is about free speech. No. Elon is about free speech for which, honey, I I was thinking about Elon's mother. Have y'all ever seen her? I showed y'all the lady in black before. Honey, I was seeing her in my head and I was supposed to say rich instead of which. Elon is not for free speech for all. Elon is for free speech for rich, cisgender, heterosexual, white menses. Honey, yeah, menses, 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 menses. Uh-huh. Ciao, honey. Speaking of questionable white people. Drake Bell. Drake Bell. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. This is supposed to be about black folks and black... Trust me, all of these things that I discuss are affecting y'all. Mm-hmm. It's it's still it's always about us. It's always about us over here. However, you know sometimes the placeholder is non-melanated, which is fine. Drake Bell, honey, you know they done done this special, quiet on set and all that, right? and they is revealing all the teas behind Nickelodeon, honey, Nickelodeon and the Kitty Diddlers and all. Wow, oh, honey, you know they done been kitty diddling and diddling kitties, honey, over there. You know they do it at Disney, honey. They do it at uh, Nickelodeon. Allegedly, allegations, uh, retraction, re- redacted. Um, Nickelodeon, honey, Disney, um, child. Uh, who else they got now? The Cartoon Network. Uh, anywhere that children works in Hollywood, baby, you better watch your child, honey. Hide your wife, hide your children from Hollywood. If they want to use AI for something, they need to go ahead and AI children in films and television because we don't trust them on set with y'all freaks. But anyway, Drake then came out, honey, and he done spooked the tea. They done did the quiet on set. What we learned from quiet on set is Dan Schneider. We learned about Dan Schneider. Do y'all know who Dan Schneider is? Huh? The fat one. Yeah, the one on the left. That's Dan Schneider. We learned about Dan Schneider. Honey, let's honey, let's go back to Dan while we talk about Dan. Honey. Oh, not that picture of Dan, honey. Ooh, that ain't Dan. Ooh. Here we go. Dan. Hey, Dan. Baby, now let's talk about Dan. Dan liked to play favorites, and Amanda Bonds was one of Dan's favorites. Drake Bell, pictured here, he spooked Dan Snyder's Kitty Diddlin set, honey, as well as he had already spooked Brian Peck's Kitty Diddlin set. Y'all probably wasn't aware of that. Let's see if we can pull up a picture of Brian Peck. But Brian Peck um, already registers as an offender. Him and Drake Bell registers as offenders. Honey, you know sometimes the victim becomes the perpetrator, honey. Y'all know sometimes the prey becomes the predator. And apparently this is what happened with, um, with Drake Bell. But yeah, you know, Drake had told on Ryan. I remember I always 
had told on Brian. I remember I always wondered what happened to Drake because I always thought that he was going to be, you know, superstar. You know what I mean? I had always seen that for him, and then he kind of just disappeared. Well, apparently he had disappeared, honey, because like most child actors, he had fell prey to the kiddly diddling and became a kiddly diddler. Mm -hmm. That's Brian Peck. Yeah, Brian, yeah. It's, 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 it's giving offenders. It's giving registered. Register Brian, register Drake. But Drake, you know, the, the rabbit hole goes deeper. Drake wanted to tell his story. Drake wanted to tell his story. So he told on Brian Peck and um, threw Dan Schneider under the bus, who he said was kiddie diddling him as a child. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we learned that our black talent was heavily ignored. The black talent on Nickelodeon was heavily ignored. Let's get a raise of hands for anybody who's surprised. Nobody putting their hands out? None of y'all was surprised that, that the black children was ignored on set? And overall, Nickelodeon didn't do a great job of protecting the children. Ain't it about protecting the children? It's awful funny how these politicians keep talking about protecting the children, but they keep bringing up the transgenders and not the actual offenders. Oh. Mm. oh. Dan Schneider. Hide your wife, hide your kids, hide your dog, hide your cat from Dan. Dan can't be trusted around nothing but a donut. And he gonna eat that. Dan looked like he done had a gastric bypass or something. Maybe Dan is on that Ozempic. Dan was running things. Honey, yeah, this is my whole childhood. Yes, I was a child during the 90s and the early 2000s. Yes, and I was watching Nickelodeon. And Dan was so heavy behind the scenes. You know how some people be so big behind the scenes that, they, that you just remember their face. You see them on camera and everything. Dan was that person for Nickelodeon during that era. This is him and his favorite, Amanda Bonds. I think it's safe to say that Dave's, that uh, that Dan's favorite, honey, Amanda. I think it's safe to say that Dan's favorite, Amanda, turned out to have some issues as well. Y'all, yeah, y'all know that Amanda had had that breakdown, and you know we have had never really seen. Amanda again after the breakdown and you know they was talking about rehabilitations and mental health and addictions and all anyway let's do an Amanda Bonds update let's let's see how Amanda's doing these days y'all know she had went to cosmetology school can't you tell by her makeup Hey everybody, I wanted to let my fans know that I'm taking the board exam to get my manicure license this Tuesday. I really hope I pass the test this time. I will let you all know if I do or don't, of course, and I'll keep retaking it until I get the license. I hope everybody has a great day. Bye. Hey everybody, I wanted to let my fans know. Amanda said that she is not giving up on her cosmetology license and that she wants y'all to know that you can depend on her to do your hair and makeup legally. In the very near future, professionally. Let's do a show of hands again. How many people are excited about Amanda working in the shop? Amanda got a podcast now too. Thank you, Ladarian. What does it, have you listened to Amanda's podcast, Ladarian? What is Amanda on there talking about? Does she bring up Brian Peck or Dan Schneider at any point? Mm, mm, let's pray. We all. I would like everybody to pray for Amanda and her and her mental health wellness on her wellness journey, honey. Y'all know that your girl, me, is is still in recovery from her last mental breakdown. Fortunately for me, um, I it's never gotten as bad as as Amanda. Yes, praise the Lord. She looks unrecognizable, baby, honey. If her name wasn't. In the title, I wouldn't have known it was her. Okay. But since we talking about diddling, happy finger, men in Hollywood, did y'all hear about Kenneth Howard? Yes, we is all in the hetero cisgender people business this week. 
it's a point. You know, it's always a point to every stream, people. Honey, just stick it, stick in it. But did y'all hear about Kenneth? Oh, Kenny Dolan. Oh, ball head hussy. Yeah, Kenny. Kenny got sticky fingers. Kenny done did TED Talks and everything, honey. Yeah. Ladarian, he is not, no, he's, I don't know if he's a Nazi. That's not what we're reporting, Ladarian. We reporting about Kenneth being this professional Hollywood photographer. And now he got allegations and now he's going to court, honey. Yeah, yeah. I be hearing a lot of y'all and y'all complain about how we stay lynching other black people in the media. Well, baby, I just want to introduce y'all to Kenneth so y'all can feel free to give Kenneth the rope. Mm-hmm. Give, give him rope. I didn't say do nothing with it. I give people rope all the time. And like the old saying goes, when you give a person rope, they either going to climb or they're going to hang themselves. Well, honey, Kenneth might be awaiting and praying for a hung jury because Kenneth is is looking like Kenneth is going to court for these charges and stuff. It's been a few people. It's been a few people that then spoke out and they came out about good old Kenneth. Oh, Kenny boy. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. I keep telling y'all, hide your wife, hide your kids, honey. Um, hide your siblings. Hide your cats, hide your dogs, hide your gerbil. Yes, there's all. Y'all didn't see that episode of South Park? With Mrs. Garrett and Mr. Slave in, in the gerbil? Honey, you better hide all your damn pets. Think that I'm playing with you now. Honey, baby. But let's keep it going. Who's next? Child Lawrence Andrews is next. Since we in Hollywood, honey... Why not talk about the black Hollywood gays? They be kitty diddling and offending and, and all the assaults and all. Child. Lawrence. Lawrence Andres. What did Lawrence do? Well, I can tell you one thing Lawrence did. Lawrence is producer of Blue Bloods, How to Get Away with Murder, Godfather of Harlem, Superstition, Supernatural, Being Mary Jane, Medical Investigation, Alias, Boomtown, Six Feet Under, Millennium, The Hoop Life, just to name a few. Yes. Yes. You may not have known Lawrence's face, but you know Lawrence's work. Sure, honey, I'm I'm still watching reruns on how to get away with murder. Shout out to Annalise Keaton in that iconic stroll, baby, honey. Somebody give Annalise her cane. Let's find out what Lawrence then did, honey, from the accuser's mouth. It's the word. It's the word. I'm sorry, I can't see it. It is a trauma John Doe doesn't, doesn't want to be identified will never forget. The criminal complaint against his alleged attacker, Lawrence Andrews, Andrews a well-known well Hollywood writer, spells it out. In no, first of all, first of all, y'all is not, if y'all didn't know that there was anything more powerful than white woman tears, then you will learn here today. The white man's tears will have you weeping with him. Honey, baby, it's, I feel something in the pit of my stomach got this white man crying on national TV on ABC News. Because, because he and investigators, investigators are afraid there, there may be more victims. I believe that he drugged one of my drinks, took me to his place, and then... He, uh, I can't say the word. I can't say the word. I'm sorry, I can't say it. It is a trauma John Doe, who doesn't want to be identified, will never forget. The criminal complaint against his alleged attacker, Lawrence Andres, a well-known Hollywood writer, spells it out in black and white. Andres is facing six felony charges, including sodomy, oral copulation, and sexual penetration while the victim was unconscious by the use of a drug. Andres, who has worked on numerous shows, including Six Feet Under, Blue Bloods, and Supernatural, was John's mentor. The military veteran and aspiring writer says he met Andres at a writer's program. They became friends. That changed in June of 2022 when they went out for drinks. I always made it very clear, like, I'm heterosexual, man. That's not, that's not me, okay? Like, but I never even thought I had to say the 
never going to happen. John says his life as he knew it ended. He went to police immediately, despite knowing he was putting his Hollywood career in jeopardy. He's coming forward now because he and investigators believe he likely isn't the only one to fall victim. John is sharing his story in hopes of helping others come forward. You still have a voice. He did not take that away from you. You have the power to use your voice to help to ensure that this doesn't happen to anyone else. If you have any information regarding Andrews, you are urged to call, call the, the LAPD. LAPD. He, he is, is due, due back, back in, in court in April if convicted on all the charges. It's not looking good for Lawrence. It's not looking good for Lawrence. Honey, y'all seen what happened to R. Kelly? Honey, y'all seen what happened to Bill Cosby? And neither one of them had a white man crying on ABC News. Ooh, it's not looking good for Lawrence. Honey. Oh, Chanel. Honey, we're going to have to run through again. I don't know if y'all call all the sick. Let's run through another newscast. The military veteran turned writer retelling the night he says he was drugged and sexually assaulted by veteran Hollywood producer Lawrence Andres back in 2022. He didn't admit that he drugged me. Um, but he did admit the acts, the actual sexual acts, which is on our mention on the complaint. Andres, whose work includes Six Feet Under, Blue Bloods, and How to Get Away with Murder, is facing six felony sex charges against John while he was unconscious by the use of a drug. I really believe that there are other victims out there. He says Andres mentored kids and was also a camp counselor for many years, and he's urging other possible victims to come forward. And they may be in the shadows, they may be ashamed to come forward because I don't ever want to talk about this again. Based on the charges, Andrews could face several years in prison, but John says the district attorney's office is considering a three-year plea deal in this case, a deal he finds totally unacceptable. Because my, my entire life is irrevocably like, damaged because of this. I feel, I still feel disgusting and damaged. Like, I feel like a damaged human being. What happened to him has dramatically, dramatically impacted his life. It's, it's turned his life upside down. So we want to make sure that there's an appropriate punishment for that. Under Marcy's law, victims of sex crimes are entitled to certain rights. And his lawyer advocate is making sure that happens and that the district attorney's office is listening to what John thinks is a fair resolution. Andrews is out on bail and John worries he could do it again. Because the ease with which he did this and the gaslighting and the like, there was no worry in him at all. Like. He treated me like a thing. He says if other victims do, do come, come forward, forward, the legal, legal system, system can, can protect, protect them, them too. We have reached out to, to the LA County District Attorney. Baby, baby, baby. Did y'all catch that? Apparently Lawrence has a history as a count as a camp counselor around children and if convicted they talking about giving this man three years my stepfather now now this is an example of what's wrong with our legal system and sex crimes is one of those things that aren't persecuted hard enough or serious enough if you ask my opinion my stepfather for example did over 20 years in the feds for selling substances. Yes, they were illicit. Of course they were illicit. How else would he became a millionaire? But he did over 20 years. Him and some of my uncles. For being the plugs. And you can literally take somebody's body and be considered for only three years in this country or three years max, maximum. It's common. It's common. Yes, it is common for the convicts of sex crimes to do less than 10 years. Even if those crimes are against children. But I was, you know, doing my due diligence on Mr. Lawrence Andrews or whatever, and I had came across this interview. 
And Lauren says something interesting. Well, something that I thought was interesting. Uh and another thing that was kind of mentioned in the panel that I would like to point out that you brought up was um, building networks. And that's, it sounds like that's kind of what you did. You know, you weren't just out here. You didn't show up and all of a sudden everyone just trusted you. You had to build a network. You had to mm -hmm. build that trust. Yes. Uh, what are some suggestions that you might have for people who are aspiring writers to begin building those relationships in the industry? You know, I tell new writers that of course, it's about being in the right place at the right time, and that place is rarely your couch. You have to get out of your house and get out of your comfort zone and meet people. Some people will, will, will say, oh, Hollywood's about all, it's only about who you know. Well, then get off your ass and know people. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. And, and it's not going to start with, by knowing a showrunner or an executive. It's going to be that guy or that woman at Starbucks that you had a connection with. And if you have that connection, you two will rise together in the business and you'll form a larger circle. Start starting, starting a campfire, you don't start with a giant, giant log, start with a little kindling. And and that girl well, honey, he goes on and he goes on and he goes on. But what I thought was interesting is a few things. He hinted on, well, he didn't hint. He came out and advised people straight up that networking um, and building alliances in the business is, is the way to to make it work. It's more about who you know. And with the fact that Lawrence is being accused of drugging and assaulting, I wonder if him and Bill Cosby went to the same school, the same school of Hollywood. You know, I wonder if him and Bill Cosby went to the same school of Black Hollywood. Because, you know, this whole... This whole storyline is is nothing new. You know, it seems like that that's what they all do. But Lawrence, it ain't looking good for you. No, no, we seen that John Doe was not only crying on ABC but NBC as well. Baby Lawrence, honey, see you at the crossroads. Hope you don't be lonely at the crossroads. Ah, uh, that name Kenneth is a curse, Ladarian said. Ladarian. <laughs> yes, yes, ain't it something, Jay? I, I have no words. I, I, I never have a whole bunch of words. All I could do is bring y'all the information and help y'all connect the dots. You know, occasionally when I do have the words and I am able to articulate my feelings on these matters, it is usually censored. And I have a feeling that we're not going to make no money off of this lot. <laughs> but anyway, did y'all hear that Suge Knight accused Tyron Turner? Y'all remember Tyron Turner from Minister Society? Suge Knight accused Tyron Turner of being Jamie Foxx's secret lover. Tyron got asked got asked about it. Let's see what Tyron Ring got back. A few, a few months, months ago, you know, he posted a video of you on his verified Twitter. And, you know, he had a wild right. caption with it, man. He said that she was Jamie Foxx's ex. How you feel about him saying that, man? Yeah, come on, man. Like, first of all, I, I don't know. You know, I don't think me and Suge have, I thought we squashed it, whatever that was. So I'm thinking that's what it is. So, and then I heard earlier, you know, that uh, his, his thing was hacked or whatever his, his Twitter was hacked. So i give you, you know, if Suge wanted to talk to me, he, he know how to contact me. He contacted me the last time we had an issue, an altercation. So he figured out how to get to me. So I'm sure he would, you know, I'm sure there's some kind of jail phone in there that kind of re could, you know, reach to me. Um, but yeah, he said something like that. So me and Jamie have been like, you know, brothers and best friend for like years. So what people don't understand is that we do a lot of business together. So you may have seen us a lot around, you know, we probably at the house coming up with ideas and stuff like that. Actually, we got a television show called Alert, you know what I mean, that we that we created, you know what I mean, that actually will be um, airing March 5th on Tuesday. So you know how it go when you when you dealing with people, people want to throw the little the, the gay rumor. It's always some somebody always got to be gay in the world. Like, but, you know, hey, I know what I, I you know, what I'm saying I know what I like. So. You feel me? I, I, I don't I wouldn't have thought that he would have that kind of, you know, 
situation because I'm like, we in a different world. Like, there's nothing wrong with being gay. You know what I mean? It's like cool. Like even even you know, uh, Danny Boy got a book. He came out and and said who he was. You know, he wasn't ashamed he of it. He, 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 um, um, he, he um, you know, he um. Do y'all know who Danny Boy is? Do you know? Do y'all know who Danny Boy is? Death Row artist. Did y'all know that there was an openly gay Death Row artist? Yeah. This is Danny Boy. It was, it was on a bunch, bunch of blog sites we reported on it. That you actually came out of the closet as a gay man. Man, yeah. At what point in your life did you realize that, that you were gay? Or are you gay or bisexual because you also have a daughter? I'm gay. I have a daughter and two sons. Daughter and two sons. Yeah. Okay. At what point in your life did you realize you were gay? I had, um, I had, I, I, I've experienced some things, uh, experienced some things when I was younger, uh, still was loving girls and I, I still love girls, and, um, but still dealing with girls. And, uh, after I was divorced, I was married for about seven years. And after my divorce, uh, I left, I left our house and. I slept in my car for about three weeks and washed up in LA fitness. And uh, I left the country. I actually went to Amsterdam for a while. When I got back, um, a guy that was pursuing me was really the only person to really open the door that I felt comfortable with. It was other people that opened the door, but I felt comfortable with going there because I didn't want people to know that I was sleeping in my car. And, uh, our relationship, we had like a just a, it wasn't even a relationship, but I stayed there. And after a while, was, you know, I, I, once I met someone, um, I just, you know, I kept trying to go back and forth. And I felt that that wasn't cool at all to be, you know, making this girl a girl think that I'm into them and or being into them and trying to be with guys at the same time. And uh, I can't say that it was a, I came out. I, I, I announced something that happened uh, that occurred in my life and out of being hurt, that's when I kind of said it and everybody put it together. Okay. I, I talked to someone at death row that, that was there during the time and you know, this is a private conversation so I can't say who it is, but I said, you know, you know, Danny Boy came out of the closet and he said, oh yeah, we, we already knew that even back then. Like, you know, like there were there was sort of, you know, rumors and stuff like that of, of you, you being gay while you were still at death row. Was was that something that, that you were still doing while you were there? Yeah, I, I dibbled and dabbled. But, you know, uh, for that person to know, did you look at them funny? You should have because you should have asked them, like, how you know? Because that's the true question. Because I didn't tell nobody. Only person that knew it was people I did stuff with. And anybody else that knew it was people that do stuff too. Okay. Danny boy ate that. Danny boy ate that, but but they they hate when we tell them that. We keep telling them that the biggest transphobes and the biggest homophobes is the DLs. But anyway, um, Danny boy fine. Shout out to Danny boy, still looking good in his age, honey. Yeah. But let's get back to Todd Rant. Honey, let's get back to Tyrant stutter, stutter, stutter. I can tell you lying, cause you know you're... that is one of my that is one of my favorite songs by Joe. I was listening to that song the other night, stutter, stutter. But Tyrant has said that um, him and Jamie are just friends, you know, and they have this show together that we've never heard of, um, and they are just close, honey, baby. He, he just, just said what, what it was. was. So, so and, and, and seeing that that was somebody that he that uh Suge signed and they were like that was like his uh his uh, his uh I, I I guess son or whatever like I I don't know if he claimed him as his son or whatever but they were close so I would think that he wouldn't have a pro I, and maybe he didn't at the time Danny Boy didn't come out or whatever that was uh about whatever his um sexual preference is you know Danny Boy is a friend of mine so this is no I, I love Danny Boy he's cool but he came out with a book and he came out and just kind of shared his, what, who he was. So I would have never thought in a million years that Suge would, would say that 
would put something out there like that or somebody being gay like that, especially in the time that we living in where it, it's okay. I had a I had an uncle that was gay. You know what I'm saying? It's nothing wrong with it. So it, it's like it, really corny. Yeah, they be doing the same thing with Dwayne Martin and Will. They be spreading that rumor, you know, saying that they be missing around. They was in a relationship, so you know, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I heard like I, I've never. The, I've met. Look, look I've, 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 I've met, met Will. Will with... He's stuttering, 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 stuttering. He said he friends with with Will, and he don't know why people be saying that kind of stuff about Will. I don't know. Y'all be the judge. What do you think? Do you think that Jamie Foxx is a secret queer, honey? Do you think that he has a secret lover? I ain't got no dog in this fight. Honestly, y'all, I really don't care. Honey, yep, yeah, because if Tyron said anything that I could rock with during that interview, he said that it doesn't matter. People shouldn't care. It doesn't matter if somebody's gay. And I absolutely agree. But of course, I'm going to bring you the tea, honey. Don't look at me crazy, honey. We still going to talk about it, baby. But I really, I really don't care if they slaying each other either way, honey. That is not an ex tape that I want to see. And it's no shade, honey. Jamie used to be fine, but honey, now I don't know if it's the man weave or or what. But it just don't, I don't know if it's the uh, Mr. Ed veneer. I don't know what it is, but it's. It's not giving what he was giving on in living color, honey, baby. Anyway, um, you know, doing my due diligence, honey. I heard Tyron talking about one of our favorites on this cast here. Talking about one of our favorites on this show, honey. You know DL. Y'all know DL, honey. Over he going over there, Puerto Rico to play the basketball. Y'all know DL. Dwight Howard. Dwight Howard. I'm going to learn his name one day, honey. But anyway, this is what Tyron had to say about D Dwight. Minutes was one of his favorite movies or whatever. So everything was cool. My dumb ass, I'm just, I'm just, it's hot off the press about uh, some dude with a wig jumped out the closet or something. Uh, what's the boy name? It was like, some dude was some dude online was at the white came over to the White House in the Uber. He got there, then some nigga jumped out in a, in a wig on on um on both of them, and the dude was like, "Oh no, I, 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 what's this a threesome or something?" I'm like, "Hold on, I ain't never heard of a you know a odd boy threesome." So I'm just it was funny to me. You know what I mean? It was just funny. So I'm my whole thing. I'm like, man, I'm. Some I'm on Instagram like man should I put should should I so I put a picture I think with the White Howard and I just had Karen White playing the back because you know on on, on the, the Lakers, Lakers you, you know, know he was, was uh, considered, considered Superman, Superman him and Shaq, Shaq. And so, so now now y'all know me y'all know Tyron said that he decided to throw up a picture of the White and he has Superwoman playing in the background. So I got, so y'all know me, I got to see what it gave. Let's go. Love and love. Okay, I can give Tyron a pass on that one because, you know, I, I ain't gonna lie, I had to cackle. I had to cackle a couple times on, on that one. I had to cackle, I had to cackle a, a, a couple times on that one. Um, Tyron, that was funny. That was funny, Tyron, honey. But Tyron, you had really got stuttering when you said you had never seen an all male threesome, honey, or never thought about it. You said, mm, "That's what you said." Oh, then I, my, my dumb, dumb ass put, put on, on um, put the White Howard on the on the screen and shit. And I got uh, I'm not your superwoman playing in the background with Karen by Karen White. It's I, I I'm not your super early in the morning. I said I'm like doing superwoman, so. At that, so, <laughs> so I'm like, so then I I check my Instagram and and Dwight like, Nick like that, I'm like, oh my, so I'm like what? I'm like, so I I'm like man, I, so I hit him and I'm like, what up, D? I said, you know what? I'm to I'm totally I'm totally out of pocket. I'm my bad, my fault. You know what I'm saying? I was just I got over. I just was I thought it was funny because see when I was coming up, you know the homies we could talk, we could bag on each other, and. Cause we just thought stuff was funny, you know. How many times Nick then bagged on me, and I didn't back like it's just part of it. But I didn't know that 
sometimes bags are just it, it can hit a little different. You know what I'm saying? The dude just jumped out the dude with the that jumped out the closet on the white. That was just it, I think it was just allegedly jumped out. I don't know whatever that was. And um I think the white took it personal and I kind of took it personal after that because I was like, damn man, the white is, you know, he's a stand up person, never did nothing wrong to me. And I was just like, I was like, damn. I was, I was actually, my feelings were hurt. I was embarrassed about it too. Cause I'm like, damn. He was like, damn, man. I he said, I would never do nothing to, to uh, embarrass you or whatever. Like, 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 you, my God, God, like, like you know what I'm saying? saying? Like, I, 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 Early in the morning, I put breakfast on your table. Honey, baby, Tyrant is a kid, ain't it? Honey, Tyrant couldn't get it together. Tyrant kept acting like he didn't know who, who Kitty was. Tyrant kept acting like he ain't no Kitty. Now, y'all know Tyrant no Kitty. Honey, oh, Mason, I didn't know that you had posted a Kitty, Mason. Mm, early in the morning, Stephen had posted Kitty, too. Mm. I know you hear me calling you Miss Kitty. Honey, Miss Kitty still done kept it on lot for y'all. Y'all still don't know who Miss Kitty is, honey, unless y'all be at the puffy parties, honey. Baby. I know y'all mad about it, honey. Because early at the morning, I put breakfast on your table. You had a reason. I know you hear me calling you. I know you hear me calling you. Miss Honey, Miss Kitty, you took a break, Jay. What's going on? OMG, pow, pow. Oh, my Lord, not the pow, pow. OMG, not the pow, pow. What is going on over here? What kind of people am I attracting and bringing together? What is happening? Nope, nope, I'm not doing it. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, pow, 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 pow. Oh, 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 oh. OMG, pow, pow. She is pow, pow in this chat, honey. She is reading Tyron. Uh, early in the. Well, speaking of people reading, honey, I didn't know that Royce had gave all these teas on DL Howard. Honey. Did, Did you, you feel, feel that, that Dwight, Dwight was gay or bisexual? And you said, well, he liked some freaky stuff, but, you know, he never brought a man home or a trans home or anything else like that. So what have you been saying that made you feel like this was going to come out eventually? Well, because of what I experienced and witnessed during quarantine. You didn't ask me about that. You oh, asked so me before. What, what happened during quarantine then? Um, there were a lot of parties. Um and we're supposed to be on quarantine. So that was an issue in itself because who are these people? Why are they here? You know, have they been tested? You're saying the world is ending, but yet you're inviting the world over. Um, and it was all types of people. Every pronoun was there. And I was, I was beyond like, I was, listen, I was shocked because I had actually gone to sleep. I had taken a nap. I woke up and it was like the sun had just started going down. Like you can even see like the little fireflies. <laughs> and I walk out and I felt like I was in an episode of something because it's people throwing up over the balcony. Like you got others cursing each other out, calling each other bitches. And then... I'm sitting here first thing after seeing this is where's my child? So I walk in the house. I see him even before I walk in the house. What's wrong? Where's Braylon? I don't know. He's somewhere. Seriously? So I walk in the house and that's when I see all the paraphernalia on the table. Some with peanut butter. And... I just, I lose it. And then, oh, and then there's a girl who just peed in a seat. And then, like, I don't even know if Kitty was there. I might have met this. I might have met Kitty. I don't know. I, I met a lot while I was there. And, and I, I just, just went, went upstairs. upstairs and We're not just going to skate past her giving Miss Kitty a shout out. 
We not just gonna skate past her giving Miss Kitty a shout out, honey. This is the second person close to Dwight who didn't gave Miss Kitty a specific. Y'all better stop sleeping on Miss Kitty, honey. And I found Braylon, and he was in like this room connects to his room with a TV. And I'm like, hey, hi, mommy. <laughs> I'm like, you okay? And he was like, yeah. And I'm like, what's wrong? Nothing. And I'm like, what's wrong? Nothing. And I, ca I had to keep asking him. And then he finally told me that he went downstairs to get something to eat. He wanted a snack. And I remember, I remember grabbing him and being like, did you take anything off that table? And he swore no. But I asked him so many times because I needed it to be reiterated like so many times to me. And he just swore no. And then he asked what it was. And then he was like, he wanted some peanut butter. And then he asked why his dad was being so mean. And we ended up going into my room because I was in the guest house. I wasn't even in the main house, which is why I didn't even hear a lot, a lot of this stuff, stuff going, going on. on. Keep in mind that she mentioned that some of the paraphernalia that she seen when she entered the house was mixed with peanut butter or was being used with peanut butter. And now the child says that he went downstairs in the kitchen and he wanted peanut butter. And his father started acting mean, assumably overreacting. Allegedly, allegation. And went back, back to the guest house. house and he laid down. He just started watching, you know, TV. And I remember going back out there and I was just going off on everybody. Um, Kevin Wesley was there. Um, and he's the one that is in all this polygamy stuff too. Um, and then his friend at that moment, Callie, I remember him like going off on him. And then I even remember the next day him threatening to shoot up the entire house because of some gay shit. I didn't know what that gay shit was. But I knew I needed to get up out of there. And that's when that argument happened later on that night because this guy was posting all these videos over YouTube. And he was talking about what had just happened that night before. And I knew I was at the house. And I'm like, I got to get out of here because this is child endangerment. And, and I, I told, told him, him I was leaving, leaving later, later on that evening. evening and, and it turned into this... I'm assuming she was talking about... Um the allegations against DL. I'm not 100% sure, so I'm not going to elaborate on that, but what we are going to elaborate on, honey, is the child's endangerment aspects of it all. Honey, now, before I had told y'all, and I really don't like to talk about uh, children, whether celebrity children or not, but I had leaked the little tea to y'all before about um, Royce and Dwight's son being accused of diddling or experimenting with another child who was non-consenting. Another boy, another little boy. And I'm imagining that if this child doesn't have any real supervision in these atmospheres, well, I don't even want to imagine what this child could have seen with no supervision in these atmospheres. And again, honey, this is DL culture. Honey, this and DL culture is perpetuated by homophobia. Are we really trying to protect the kids or are we trying to protect ourselves? What's going on? Because clearly ain't no children being protected here. Honey. And not to say that Miss Kitty couldn't be a great babysitter. Miss Kitty would probably make a wonderful storyteller, story time reader in the library. You know, drag hour, you know. Probably a beautiful, beautiful babysitter. Lovely lingerie. Lovely lace.
I'm not about to play with y'all. What y'all in here talking about, honey? Uh, Jay Keekin said, why is Iman in the wig? No, that was not Iman, honey. No, honey, y'all know Iman don't look like no horse face DL. Y'all the ones, uh, Dwight, y'all the ones who think Dwight is attractive. I don't see it, honey. I mean, you know, the, the body builds and the height and all that. I get it with that, but honey, mm-mm, I don't. Anyway, honey, another tea that I had leaked to y'all a while ago. Honey, we had discussed this one on the tickler top. I don't recall if we had discussed this one here on the wine with me Wednesday. But baby, we discussing it now, honey. Ruby Colorado. Well, Ruby Corrado is, is her name. But to me, Ruby Colorado just sounds so much more entertaining, honey. And this story is one that wrote itself. Baby, hot Ruby, yeah, mother transgender Ruby, honey, mother community, honey. She was in DC doing some of the Lord's work. She was in DC doing some of the Lord's work, honey. Ruby is an immigrant, tech. yes, honey, yes, that woman had came here and had did things, you know, had grabbed it up from her bootstraps. As the KKK say, honey, she was hanging from her bootstraps and she reeled it in. Ruby was doing good work. Honey, you know, this bill could have hit. Let me um let the professional people break the story down for you. Well, damn, is the story how long the story gonna develop? Honey. What is going on? Not technical difficulties. What's going on? Ruby, you know how Ruby is it you Developing throwing chicken like bones? A... I think Ruby over there is the one throwing chicken bones to keep messing up our live stream or something. Huh? Ruby Colorado, honey, NBC. Shout out to NBC. Founder of a DC nonprofit serving unhoused LGBT youth is under arrest tonight for money laundering and stealing money. Yet the U.S. attorney for the district said Ruby Corrado stole at least $150,000 of the $1.3 million in pandemic relief funds intended for the organization Casa Ruby. News 4's Jackie Benson has new reaction tonight. Casa Ruby founder Ruby Corrado left the district for El Salvador in 2022, not long after the investigation into financial improprieties surfaced. Authorities say she was arrested in Laurel, Maryland after making an unexpected trip back to the U.S. In an interview with News 4 in 2022, Corrado denied accusations that she was stealing from the nonprofit she founded to serve homeless LGBTQ youth. I don't commit financial crimes. Casa Ruby closed its doors after a Washington Post report into financial improprieties. Corrado is now accused of siphoning hundreds of thousands in loans from the Federal Paycheck Protection Program, created to help small businesses pay workers during the coronavirus pandemic, to a personal account in El Salvador. Dani sees Arce Ramirez tells News 4 sister station Telemundo 44 that Casa Ruby's advocacy will be missed. The federal charges that Ruby Corrado is facing, fraud and money laundering, carry a maximum potential sentence of decades in prison. Jackie Benson, News 4. Honey, Ruby had went back home. Ruby had came to D.C., honey, had got the girls off the street, had got the girls off the strip. Honey was helping the girls get real jobs. Honey, Ruby had even started um, having balls and hosting balls. Honey, and Ruby had revitalized and gave life to the DMV ballroom scene. Honey, Yes, I knew Ruby Colorado personally. Yes, honey. We still Facebook friends to this day. I look, he been watching her, but honey, I didn't know that Lu that Ruby would not have good enough sense to not come back to the U.S. Honey, Ruby said that um, it was about to be 28 days later during COVID. Honey, I don't know what Ru Ruby believed. I think Ruby might have threw some dice and some chicken bones and it didn't come up to be the outcome that she wanted it to be. So Ruby was like, I'm going home, honey. Ruby said, I got a couple dollars, honey. I done took these dollars from the government, honey. I'm going home. Is what Ruby had said. Yeah, Ruby had came over here and married a black man and everything, y'all, honey. Yep. Negro. See. Yes, honey. Yeah, Ruby, Colorado. Honey. 
And then I had sent, I had sent that my dink, my dink had posted, my dink was on the news. Shout out to, shout out to dink. Hey, dink. Shout out to dink. Dink was on the news. Honey, I liked this coverage a lot more. This coverage, I think, spoke better than anything I could say on here because this is from somebody who works with Ruby and knew Ruby way more closely than I did, so... Oh, they about to play. Oh, they about to play in our face. Oh. Oh, we doing that? We doing that? We playing. Oh, they playing in faces today. That's fine, honey. We could just go to Dink's um, IG and we can promote Dink's IG in the process, honey. Baby, give me 17 seconds. Okay, yes, I really love the coverage that Dink gave. I really love the coverage that of the newscast that Dink was involved in because it gave a more intimate perspective of Ruby's effects on the LGBTQ population. Okay, let's see. We on Dink's page. Let's see if we can get some voice. Cunt, the founder of an LGBTQ plus nonprofit back in the country and, and back, back in court, court after, after being accused of laundering money and then fleeing to El Salvador. The question now is, will the judge keep her behind bars? And what about all those who are still owed money? The founder of DC-based nonprofit Casa Ruby accused of fleeing to El Salvador after being accused of fraud and laundering the money that was meant for the center, was arrested Tuesday. I feel like the universe is giving her what she dished out. Um, but a part of me is sad because it's like, it's still devastating and it's like traumatizing. Denzel McCall tells me that he is still dealing with that trauma years later. He tells me he's just one of around 30 employees who were never paid when Ruby Corrado disappeared. He says it was her initial positive work. The oppression that people um, were fighting against still happens today. That drew him in. He started as a volunteer in 2019 at the center that served the LGBTQ plus community, providing those in need with food, shelter and jobs. But before that, he says he would just go to Casa Ruby to be his true self. It was like a rec center for LGBT people to just be their selves and we would dance all the time and just have fun and laugh it was just great times but those great times would not last in 2022 investigators say corrado skimmed at least one hundred fifty thousand dollars for herself from the 1.3 million in taxpayer-backed emergency relief funds intended for the nonprofit. a lot of people were angry and i feel like they felt like they were portrayed by ruby but I think it's more about the clients we serve. A lot of clients have passed away. A lot of people just fell on drugs. Um, a lot of the clients fell on drugs and fell on the wayside. McCall says when funds were redirected, many of the clients were housed in non-LGBTQ plus friendly shelters and employees and vendors were owed tens of thousands of dollars. I do hope that, you know, they do come up with some type of resolution of, of like a survival fund or something like that, um, especially for the client and the worker. He says he feels they deserve closure and justice. Now, Ruby, Ruby Corrado is due back in court next week. Seven, Seven News will be there to track the latest developments in her case. Stay with us on air and online at WJLA.com. The founder of an LGBTQ+. Nonprofit back in the country. I want to get a close up of him. I want him to get back on the camera, honey. Don't he? Don't he look like a a cute gecko? A gecko, nonetheless. Anyway, let's not get distracted. Um, Dink made some points, and Dink made huge points in this case. Regardless of Ruby's reasoning for going back to El Salvador. 
regardless of Ruby's reasoning for going to South America or wherever she ended up, she left the people behind. And she left the people to struggle and she left the people with no infrastructure and she left it all to crumble. Ruby Ruby took her six figures and she rolled out and she said, the community, y'all girls, honey. Ruby brought a lot of love to the DMV. But was it all just for a dollar? And Ruby is a prime example of why I got so offensive with the with the Beagle crew and with the Beagle drama. Cause there's a whole I give you a whole lot of ammunition. I give the whole world a whole lot of ammunition. It's a whole bunch of things you could say about Bree Star. And I don't give a fuck. Honey, if I did, I wouldn't have told you. I wouldn't have put it out there. But two things that you can know and you can trust about Bree Star is that I ain't never doing nothing just for a dollar. I don't pretend to love people for a dollar. It's so many things. I could be quiet and make more money than I do talking. Honey. Baby, I'm just here to give y'all the puzzle and let you put the dots together yourself, honey, if you want. It's up to you. I'm just here to inspire you to be you because there's nothing wrong with you. It might be something wrong with the way people perceive you or the way that they... Receive you. But for every pot, there's a lid. And for every person, there are their people. Unfortunately, too many of y'all got people, honey. I wish some of y'all denominations and demographics didn't exist. Lord, forgive me, honey. But that's my personal opinion, honey. And we're allowed to have those too. Baby, honey. I seen y'all getting on my sister Maddie because a lot of y'all got personal opinions about something that is fact. And fact is that transphobia affects all women. Mm -hmm. Y'all still misgendering these cisgender women and calling them gender trans, ain't y'all? These women is having babies, honey, and y'all say that they is ejecting transmission fluid. Honey, y'all gonna misgender these women for the rest of their lives and for the rest of our lifetimes and all that. And then y'all gonna blame it on the transgenders. Y'all gonna blame it on people like me. Honey, y'all gonna say that we the reason that they getting misgendered. Well, honey, I don't get misgendered. Mm-mm. Not unless it's somebody doing it intentionally. To be transphobic, huh? Like, y'all know that when I came up on this internet, y'all didn't know my tea till I told it. Well, of course, the other, uh, some other trans people knew, and that's probably because I had slept with them or something. Don't judge me. Don't I keep telling y'all not to judge me to go ahead and judge your mother? Yes, honey. What y'all in here talk about? Oh, y'all ain't in here saying that. I must be preaching. Well, let's get back to the love. And the bottom line is, I love you for being you. I love you for supporting your girl. And peace, love, and blessings to you and yours until we speak again. Be easy, y'all.